Ah, and we are live. Welcome back to Takes by Fans. We got a great show for you today. As always, we are live every single day at noon Eastern. If you want to watch live, head over to takesbyfans.com slash watch. If you want to watch but not live, head over to our YouTube channel, Takes by Fans. We post all of our shows and clips of the show there on a daily basis. And if you just want to listen, we are on podcasting apps, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio. So however you want to watch or listen we've got you covered multiple ways all right today's a big old saturday folks and we are doing this show an hour early because we are going to get out of here in an hour by noon because today's the last day of you know college football the last kind of full week of college football then we get into the um uh the championship games and then the bowl games and all that um and then we've got uh, also at noon we've got ohio state michigan big game so we're gonna get out of here in time to watch and enjoy that game so we move the show up an hour. Uh, so only going to go an hour today. And what we're going to be doing, uh, going over the NBA and our NBA Daily 10, breaking down the NBA from what happened last night. We're going to play around with the playoff machine, predicting all the winners of this week's NFL action and seeing how that impacts the overall playoff picture heading into week 13. We'll play around, see what happens when everything gets wonky crazy, who, which teams can kind of get in and all that. So we'll play around with that. And then we are going to watch Philip Lindsay. Uh, he just got signed to the Dolphins. We're hoping that we get a big um, contribution from Philip Lindsay and that he can kind of establish himself as a top five. Yes, a top five rusher in this league. That's how good I believe Philip Lindsay is. If he's getting the carries and the touches, I believe that Matt could be a top five running back in this league. So. We're going to shout him out, appreciate his greatness, and uh, look forward to watching him. Probably not going to see him this week, unfortunately, but next week he's going to really pop off, and I cannot wait to see it. So we've got all that today on the show, but let's start with our NBA Daily 10. Let's put 10 minutes on this clock here. Here we go. 10 minutes on the clock. Next 10 minutes. Uninterrupted basketball talk of what just happened yesterday in the NBA. And the clock starts now. All righty. Yesterday in the NBA, lots of games on. And we there was no games on Thanksgiving Day. So all we did yesterday in our NBA Daily 10 was break down the matchups to, uh, that were on last night. And um, coming away with some picks. And we had four official picks. And we did very, very good. So we'll uh, talk those through once we get to those. But here we go. For First game up, Pistons at the Clippers. Clippers get it done. They win 107-96. It wasn't this spread like 11 and a half points. We stayed away from it because we knew the Clippers are good, but we didn't want to swallow 11 and a half points, and they only win by 11. So uh, right on the spread there, Vegas doesn't lose money, folks. We know some spreads like that, and that's why we stay away from larger spreads because of this. But either way, Clippers get the win, 107-96. Let's start here with the Clippers. Paul George, only 12 points last night. Didn't shoot good at all. One of nine from three. And he shot 26% on 19 shots. He didn't get it done, but who stepped up? In his place, scoring-wise, well, we had Reggie Jackson, 21 points, four assists, four rebounds. Uh, Eric Bledsoe with 15 points. Zubak, 10 points, 13 rebounds. But then off the bench, this is where it got good. This is where it got good. Uh, Terrence Mad, 16 points, 10 rebounds. He's been fantastic so far this season. And then Isaiah Hartenstein, 10 points, 5 rebounds. And also Serge Ibaka with not, uh, 9 big points as well. So some nice bench scoring production right here. And they faced uh, Pistons, so they didn't need that many points to begin with just to win the game. Jeremy Grant led the team in scoring, 20 points, 10 rebounds. We had Cade Cunningham with 10 points, 6 assists, 6 rebounds. Corey Joseph, 10 points. Frank Jackson, 10 points. And Trey Lyles off the bench, 13 points. But Clippers are still playing good. Paul George usually has them, you know, playing good. And this is a good sign from this Clippers team when Paul George doesn't have a good game that everybody else on this Clippers squad can um, uh, rally around him and kind of just get it done without him being the main scorer for the squad. So well done for the Clippers. Uh, great team that Paul George is truly just kind of leading every single game. Game. So we shout out this Clippers team. Another win right here. They beat the Pistons last night. All right, then we go to the Timberwolves at the Hornets here. Hornets get the big old win, 133-115 over the Timberwolves. Who did good on this Hornets team for the big old win? Lomelo Ball, 10 points, but those 13 assists, absolutely fantastic. Terry Rogier, I mean, this starting lineup all got it done last night. Uh, Terry Rogier, 15 points. P.J. Washington, 17 points, 6 rebounds. Miles Bridges, 18 points, 7 rebounds. Gordon Hayward, 18 points, 6 assists, 6 rebounds. Everybody shooting basically 15 
50% and higher in the starting lineup. So all the starters were on point. And then off the bench, Kelly Oubre Jr., where he belongs. I'm so glad that he's comfortable. I don't know if he loves it 100%. I'm sure, you know, everybody obviously wants to be a starter um, in any sport. But I'm glad that Kelly Oubre Jr. is not really pushing back that much in, like, the national media and the spotlight. Because he could. He could theoretically just be like, hey, I want to be in the starting lineup. I'm a starter. I'm not a bench player. I'm not nothing like that. So I'm glad Kelly Oubre Jr. is fitting in perfectly here off the bench here for the Hornets. This is what we've been wanting all season long. And we've gotten it uh, over the last couple of games. And he's just been showing out. He's so good off the bench here. 27 points led the team in scoring. 53% from three on 13 threes. 58% on 17 shots from the field. Absolutely fantastic. And let's also not forget... <clears throat> Jalen McDaniels off the bench, 14 points, 8 rebounds as well. So everybody on the Hornets was getting giving a great production game last night. And then for the Timberwolves, the big three, Anthony Edwards, 11 points, 5 rebounds. All right, they move him back to the th uh, two. We've seen him play the three a little bit. And I th do think I like him at the three, but they move him back to the two here. D'Angelo Russell, 18 points, 5 assists. And Carl Anthony Towns, 25 points, 6 assists, 7 rebounds. So other than the big three, the only other good contribution was from Malik Beasley off the bench, 18 points, but other than that, nothing great here, and they come up short like we know the Timberwolves do a little bit uh, too much, a little bit, coming up a little bit short. So Hornets get the big old win, 133-118. 115. All right, next game up here, Suns and the Knicks, and this was one of our official picks from last night. Suns minus three, and they have no problem winning by 21 points out here. They win 118-97 over the Knicks here. Suns just absolutely rolling. DeAndre, eight and 14 points, 13 rebounds. Devin Booker, 32 big old points. Chris Paul, 14 points, 10 assists. Fantastic. Jay Crowder, 11 points on three of four from three. Classic Jay Crowder game. And then McCall Bridges with 10 points, but then off the bench, the Cameron brothers, folks. Cameron Johnson, 10 points, 2 assists, 3 rebounds. Cameron Payne, 13 points, 6 assists, able to get it done. This Suns team is just absolutely rolling, starting 5, usually kind of 2 great bench pieces on a nightly basis, and they're extended their lead. What are we at now? 16 games? 16 game win streak. Let's refresh this standing page. Come on, come on, come on. Where are we at? Uh, 15. Last night, we update this. We're going to get 16. No, still 15. Okay, 15, whatever it was. 14 entering this game, whatever it was. All right, back to the Suns-Knicks game. Everybody got it done for the Suns. And then for the Knicks... R.J. Barrett, 10 points. Uh, Julius Randle, he had 9 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists. He shot 37%. R.J. Barrett also shot 30%. Uh, Evan Fournier, 11 points on 26%. Once again, Evan Fournier, not the most consistent guard out here. And we know this Knicks starting lineup overall is mo is really not the most consistent overall. Kemba Walker led the team in scoring, and now you're getting into some dangerous territory when we start saying that. Kemba Walker, 17 points. He had 2 assists, 3 rebounds. He shot well, 45% on 11 shots. No um, um, no Derrick Rose off the bench. Emmanuel quickly did have 16 points. Also, Alec Burks had 9 points. Just not enough to beat the super team that is the Suns. We know the Suns are one of the best teams in the league. Just, just got to the finals last season, and the Knicks are not ready to kind of compete with that level just quite yet. So this Knicks team, yes, they're still good, but they're still kind of in you know the middle of the pack good. They're not ready to beat the upper echelon teams, and the Suns get the big old win uh, by 21 last night. <laughs> All right, next game up here is Bulls at the Magic here, and the Bulls blow them out here, 123-88. No Cole Anthony last night for the Magic, and that's exactly what happens. Everything falls apart. And then for the Bulls, everybody good. The big four good here. DeMar DeRozan, 23 points, four assists, five rebounds. Vucevic, 16 points, eight rebounds. Zach Levine, 21 points, five assists, four rebounds. And Lonzo Ball, 13 points, five steals, six assists, four rebounds. Everybody doing what they're supposed to uh, with the main four here. And then off the bench, we had Kobe White, 20 points. Absolutely fantastic. So this Bulls team, this is what they are when they're at full strength. Absolutely fantastic. Back on track with Vucevic back in the lineup. We love it. 
All right, then we get the Raptors at the Pacers, and we took the Pacers plus four last night, and they lose. They disrespect us. They end up losing by 17 points. What the heck is up with that? And you lose to the Pacers that never win games? Come on, Raptors. Pa Pacers get the win, 114-97. This was the only pick that we missed on last night. Truly unfortunate. Let's start here with the Raptors and see what went wrong. Fred Van Vliet, 26 points, four assists, five rebounds. Really solid performance by the man. Gary Trent Jr., only 13 points. He shot 36%. Precious at the five. 9.7 rebounds. Pascal Siakam, 17 points, 12 rebounds. And then Scotty Barnes, 17 points, 7 rebounds, and 4 assists. So everybody in the starting lineup got it got it solid here. But then their leading bench scorer was Chris Boucher, 9 points, 4 rebounds off the bench. That's not going to get it done. And let's see what got it done with this Pacers team. Look at this bench, folks. Three players in double-digit scoring. This gets it done. Chris Duarte, 12.6 rebounds. Torrey Craig, 11 points, 3 rebounds. And Kalen Martin, 15 points, 3 rebounds all off the bench. That gets it done. Sabonis does his thing. 23 points, 8 rebounds. Miles Turner, 17 points, 10 rebounds. Karis LeVert, 19 points, 5 rebounds. So they get the win over this Raptors team. Come on, Raptors. Got to be better than that. <clears throat> All right, then we get the Hawks at the Grizzlies. We took this game, Hawks, plus a point, and they absolutely blow out the Grizzlies by 32 big old points, winning 132 to 100. This Hawks team, they're back at it. They're getting it done. We love it. Trey Young, 31 points, 10 rebound or 10 assists. Clint Capella, 23 points, 17 rebounds. John Collins, 21 points, 8 rebounds, just absolutely dominating this Grizzlies team. That is not the same Grizzlies team as last season. John Morant only played 8 minutes, unfortunate with the injury. Hopefully he's good, uh, so we barely played last night and if you don't have John Morant you're not going to win this game because he's your number one obviously and that's what we saw last night now we get the Wizards at the Thunder and the Wizards win a close one here 101 and 99 Kyle Kuzma 11 points 10 rebounds 5 assists shot solid 55% Bradley Beal 20 points 6 assists able to get it done and they beat the Thunder where Lugan Stort had led the team in scoring 21 points 4 rebounds and Shea Gillis Alexander with 15 points, 9 assists, uh, 8 rebounds. Close game overall, but the Wizards pull away. All right, we got to go qu quick here. We got 30 seconds left and like five games to cover. We got Celtics at Spurs up next year, and the Celtics lose. No surprise to us. Spurs get the big old win here, 96 to 88. Celtics, man, Jalen Brown's in the starting lineup. It doesn't work. They move it around. Now, this is now this is interesting. We can spend a little time on this because this is the new starting lineup now. <clears throat> um, now that Jalen Brown is back, they still want Dennis Schroeder in the starting lineup, and I agree. So they move Marcus Smart to the one, Dennis Schroeder at the two, Jalen Brown at the three, Tatum at the four, and Al Horford at the five. I like this lineup in theory. Obviously, it didn't work last night. Truly unfortunate. That is our 10 minutes, but we got to finish up here. Uh, so Jalen Brown, 16 points, four rebounds, three assists. Uh, Jason Tatum, 24 points, 12 rebounds. Dennis Schroeder didn't have a great game. He had eight points. He had four assists and five rebounds. That's good, but eight points on 21% shooting on 14 shots. Marcus Smart, 13 points, eight assists, seven rebounds, and and then no great bench production. So we'll see if this Celtics team keeps up <clears throat> with this starting lineup. I honestly think you just have to move Marcus Smart out of the starting lineup. I need Dennis Schroeder in the starting lineup. Put Dennis Schroeder at the one, Jalen Brown at the two, Tatum at the three, bring back, um, you know, uh, Al Horford at the five, um, and then have, um, we can have Ennis Cantor, honestly, at the four, and then keep Al Horford at the five. But your main three should be Schroeder, Jalen, Brown and Jason Tatum uh, and just have Marcus Mark come off the bench. I know he probably won't like coming off the bench, but I really think that's what this Celtics team needs to do with Jalen Brown in the starting lineup. All right, and then they lose to the Spurs here. Who got it done for the Spurs? We had DeJounte Murray, 29 points, 6 assists, 11 rebounds. Derek White, 17 points, 7 assists, 8 rebounds. Uh, Jacob Podol, 7 points with the 12 rebounds. And then Keldon Johnson, 17 points and 14 rebounds, able to beat this Celtics team. Once again, losing with Jalen Brown in the starting lineup. Never a good sign. Then we have the Bucks at the Nuggets. We called this the best bet of the night. Bucks minus three and a half, and they win by 11. No problem here. Once again, no joke kick, and also, obviously, no Michael Porter Jr., so Aaron Gordon has to step up, and he just doesn't. Only 18 points. I mean, if you're the main scorer, you're going to have to put up 30 points. I mean, that's what it is. It's unfortunate, and we know that that's not really Aaron Gordon's game, and we got that last night. 18 points, nine rebounds for Aaron Gordon. Uh, nobody really stepped up great scoring-wise. The second leading scorer was Will Barton with 17 points. The third leading scorer was Facundo Capazzo. Love that. He had a solid game. Facundo Capazzo, 17, or 16 points, uh, two assists. 
Uh, Monte Morris, 15 points, 8 assists, but they don't have any of their magic here. They're not winning games. And then for the Bucks, everybody's good to go uh, besides Brooke Lopez at the 5, but that's Bobby Portis. We got big believe ability in him. 11 points, 8 rebounds. Grayson Allen, 10 points, 2 of 5 from the 3. Drew Holiday, 16 points. Giannis, 24 points, 13 rebounds, 7 assists. Chris Middleton, 17 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds. And then off the bench, Pat Connaughton, folks. And Pat Connaughton plays fantastic off the bench. Don't love him in the starting lineup, but now that everybody's healthy, he goes back down to the bench. 20 points, 4 rebounds. Bucks get the win here. All right, final three games. Pelicans at the Jazz. Pelicans get the win here. 98-97 uh, with Graham hitting the game, winning three here for this Pelicans team. Let's start here with the Jazz. What went wrong? They had everybody good to go. Donovan Mitchell, 16 points, but he shot 28% on 21 shots. Uh, Mike Connolly, 12 points. Rudy Gobert, 9 points only. 10 rebounds. Bohan Bogdanovich led the team in scoring 23 points. He shot 5 of 8 from 3, so love seeing Bogdanovich back here. Uh, both the Bogdanovich brothers have been getting it done the last kind of week here. Absolutely love seeing it. The kind of second unit of the bench here. Hassan Whiteside, only 1 point. Joe Ingles, he had 12 points and 5 rebounds. Jordan Clarkson, 7 points on 12 shots. And Rudy Gay, 9 points. So, unfortunate, the second unit of the Jazz wasn't as good as they've been, and they lose to this Pelicans team. Brandon Ingram put up 21 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists. Jonas Valanciunas, 11 points, 10 rebounds. Very well done. Uh, Willie Hernana Gomez off the bench, 13 points. Kiera Lewis Jr., 10 points off the bench. And Nikhil Alexander-Walker, 15 points off the bench. And that big three by Graham. All right, then we get the Blazers at the Warriors. Warriors win again, 118-103. Blazers are not ready to compete with this, uh, with any star-studded teams. We know this. Steph Curry, 32 points. Jordan Poole, 14 points. Kevon Looney, 12 points, 7 rebounds. Draymond Green, 12 points, 12 assists, 8 rebounds. Fantastic. Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins. So gosh dang consistent. I love it. Ooh, we will never not praise Andrew Wiggins, folks. We've been praising this man every single game, every single day for the last two years because he's so gosh dang consistent. 25 points on 62% shooting. Absolutely love it. They beat the Blazers. Damian Lillard, 16 points, 6 assists. CJ McCollum, 16 points, 7 rebounds. Nurchic, 17 points, 4 rebounds. Not enough. It's not enough, folks. Last game of the night. Kings at Lakers. And the Lakers lose in triple overtime to the Kings, 141 to 137. LeBron, 30 points, 11 assists, 7 rebounds. Anthony Davis, 23 points, 8 rebounds. I mean, folks, the way game went into triple overtime. Russell Westbrook, 29 points, 11 assists, 10 rebounds. Only 3 turnovers, only minus 4 on the floor. Russell Westbrook still deserves respect. We're not going to be clowning him like everybody else. Buddy healed on the bench for the Kings. 25 points. Uh, fantastic. Uh, 3 of 13 from the 3. Not fantastic, but we'll take 25 points. Darren Fox led the team in scoring 34 points. 8 assists. Uh, 6 rebounds. Tyrese Halliburton, 19 points. 9 assists. 6 rebounds. Fantastic. Overall, the game went into triple overtime, folks. What more do you want? Everybody was scoring. Everybody was putting up points. It went into triple overtime. Alrighty. That is all the time we have for the NBA today. Super went late in the NBA. Uh, still some stuff to talk about here. And we're trying to get out of here within an hour. So that is all the NBA from last night. I guess quickly we can see, is there any great value in tonight's NBA games? I mean, we just truly hit, I mean, three out of four fantastic Um uh, uh, on our picks last night. So let's see if we can replicate that with any great value. We get Timberwolves at the 76ers here. Timberwolves plus five, 76ers minus five. Uh, is, if Joel Embiid is back, we'll bet. But as long as Joel, oh, he's a game time decision. Hopefully he can come back. Uh, game time decision. We'll stay away from this one. We need Joel Embiid back. And it's seeming like he's close, folks. Very, very close to come back. Cannot wait. All right, Suns at Nets. Suns on the back-to-back. -back. We will stay away from that. We are officially never betting back-to-back anymore we are done on that uh, so we'll stay away from the Suns even though we love the Suns team they're in a back-to-back -back against the Nets not gonna bet it then we get the Knicks at the Hawks once again Hawks on a back-to-back -back. Knicks on a back-to-back -back. gonna stay away from this one Hawks minus five Knicks plus five and this is gonna be a nice big exciting matchup here Knicks and the Hawks like the playoff series I mean Trey Young and Madison Square Garden getting clowned but now that they're in Atlanta we'll see what this Hawks team does we'll stay away from it all right, then we get the Heat at the Bulls. Heat minus one and a half. Bulls plus one and a half. Bulls in a back-to-back. -back, potentially not good for them. Let's see if everybody's good to go for the Heat. And Markeith Morris is out, but everybody else is good to go. I think we'll stay away from this is to see how this Bulls team reacts on a back-to-back -back plus with everybody back. I don't think it's great value. Then we get the Hornets at the Rockets. Hornets minus six. Rockets plus six and a half. Um, Hornets on the back-to-back. -back. We'll stay away from that. 
Uh, Magic at the Cavs. Magic plus nine and a half. Wow, they had the Cavs minus nine and a half. That's respect by Vegas, and we absolutely appreciate it. Uh, for the Magic, uh, Cole Anthony will play. We really have to stay away from this then. Cavs minus nine and a half. They're a good team. I don't know if we're ready to start betting this Cavs team minus nine and a half points, swallowing nine and a half points with this Cavs team. I like this Cavs team, but not nine and a half points worth uh, as of right now. All right, uh, Wizards at the Mavericks. Wizards on the back-to-back. -back. Mavericks not. We'll stay away from this one. Mavericks minus 6.5. And, and then Pelicans at the Jazz. Pelicans plus 12.5. Jazz minus 12.5 here. Jazz just had a bad showing. Both these teams on a back-to-back. -back. I just don't want to bet the back-to-backs. I hate betting back-to-backs. Teams flounder, you know, rest, load management, all of that. So a lot of these teams in a back-to-back, -back, we're, we're going to stay away from it. We cashed in last night. We'll take the, tonight off in the NBA. We'll be back potentially tomorrow with some bets and... And uh, breaking it down, what happened tonight, seeing where the good value was tomorrow uh, in hindsight 2020. Alrighty, that is all the NBA that we needed to go over for today. So let's shift gears over to the NFL. And before we get into uh, playing around with the playoff machine for this week's action in the NFL, let's finally give respect to Philip Lindsay. Alrighty, the 24th, Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, it comes out that Philip Lindsay was claimed by the Miami Dolphins. Ooh, I loved it. He didn't go un claimed folks somebody picked him up on the waivers I love that because that means that everybody was loving Philip Lindsay which is exactly what it should be because Philip Lindsay is one of the most disrespected underrated underutilized running backs in the league back to back thousand yard uh, rushing seasons his first two in the league his first two years in the league he gets thrown to the dumpster by the Broncos for absolutely no reason he goes to the Texans we were waiting for the Texans that use them and abuse them really because he's so gosh dang good and there's nobody good on this Texans team but then they never use them really and then he just sits there but and then the trade deadline goes they never traded him but then they finally let him go a couple weeks ago and now he is a Miami Dolphin and him and Tua are ready to just prove to the national media in the league hey why are y'all disrespecting us for absolutely no reason Tua was a fantastic quarterback Philip Lindsay like I said could be to potential top five Five running backs in the league, folks. In the league. Yes, I do believe he's that talented. So let's just watch and appreciate Philip Lindsay. We've got some highlights queued up by this man here. The first highlight package we're going to watch here. And shout out to the people that do this on YouTube. Whenever a player gets traded somewhere, uh, somebody will put up highlights welcoming him to the new team, showing this the new team what this player can do if the fans of this new team are unfamiliar with this player. So here we go. Philip Lindsay's welcome to the Miami Dolphins highlights, folks. Career highlights right here let's see what they put in this three minute highlight video we've got another highlight video to watch and then we also have what he does this season obviously probably not going to have any highlights this season because they he has been absolutely underutilized disrespectfully underutilized here I mean here we go let's just read off his rushes here through the season eight rushes week one five week two seven week three four week four five week five seven week six two week seven three week eight eight week nine he started that game and then back to only one week 11 and that's when they um you know um cut him on the team and then he goes and doesn't clear waivers and the dolphins pick him up so truly underutilized right here he's an a1 tier one running back in this league folks and the texans weren't even using him you didn't even have Tyrod Taylor, so your offense was absolutely lacking. We were watching y'all lose seven, eight games straight because y'all were just absolute trash. But they thought, hey, 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 Philip Lindsay's not going to give us any lift here offensively, so let's just stick him to the th number three running back and do nothing with him. I mean, what the hell was that? What the hell was that? Look, look at these. Loss, 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 loss. Like nine losses in a row, folks. And they still don't use Philip Lindsay. That was one of the most disrespectful thing, things I've seen uh, maybe in all of sports, folks. 
my entire life, all the big national sports, this is the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen. Uh, we like Will Cully for the Texans, the head coach, but his decision to not utilize Philip Lindsay, uh, it's a little bit of a knock on his overall uh, resume a little bit. So, absolutely disrespectful here. He's absolutely great. He's quick. He's fast. He's strong. He's nimble. He's, he's athletic. He's elusive. And we're going to see it, folks. We'll highlight it. We don't even need to highlight it because y'all will see it on the screen, but we'll talk it through when we see it and be like, hey, there's the speed, there's the strength, and we'll probably see it all on every single play. But let's um, watch Philip Lindsay's welcome to the Miami Dolphins highlights here. Shout out to uh, Simply AS10 for the great highlight package. Let's see what we get on Philip Lindsay and what we can expect to see him back uh, in the league. Fantastic. Love seeing it. All right, here we go. First play up, just hitting the boundary right here. And look at this. Look at that. The speed is here. Here, baby out running everybody on play one we get the speed from his own 35 yard line here he is crossing the 40 and the 45 and the 50 and the 45 and the 40 and the 30 and the 25 and the 20 and the 15 and the 10 the 5 the touchdown right there easy peasy goes untouched doesn't even get touched look at the great blocking up front but that's what we're talking about Philip Lindsay able to see the vision great vision hitting the holes and great speed just to burst through all these holes look at this folks he is 10 yards in the backfield right here here. There, the ball's at the 35. He's running it from the 25, and then he just goes entire 80 yards here, 70 yards here to the touchdown, no problem. And here it is at the end. This is five yards of separation that he's able to outrun before the defense gives up. Five yards of separation just purely off of his speed, folks. Look at that. Great. And you throw him to the curb. Oh, my God, Broncos. What is wrong with you? They decided to go with Melvin Gordon over one of the youngest, best, most best emerging running backs in the league. You go with Melvin Gordon? Come on. Come on. Here we go. Next play, screen pass, and this is actually from this year. He only has two touchdowns this season because, once again, they're not utilizing him. This is week two for the for the Texans here, and it's a 7 nothing game. They're down, and it's Phillip Lindsay that starts the scoring for this Texans team, and then they don't utilize him for the rest of the season. What are we doing out here, Texans? Damn! Texans disrespectful by not using him. Broncos disrespectful by literally throwing this man in the dumpster they threw him in the dumpster folks after back-to-back -back thousand yard seasons rookie year second year what is wrong with y'all are y'all not watching this man following the blockers absolutely fantastic the great speed get him out into space and he just doesn't just go out of bounds he fights for every single yard he's a true gamer out here come on I don't know how this man is not uh, uh, it's just so frustrating watching this man have to sit uh, even though we know he's so capable of doing literally everything great a running back is supposed to be doing on a gamely basis and we saw that his first two years and they throw him in the dumpster oh my god it's just absolutely disrespectful folks but he's back, so this is why we're doing this, folks. We haven't been able to talk about this man all season long. We're taking our time right now. All right, here we go. Once again, the great speed. Look at that speed ripping up 10, 20, 30 yards right there. Foof, foof. Fantastic. What else do you got, Phillip, here? All righty, in the passing game, the man can catch two. Ooh, slipping out, and look at this, folks. Look at this. Just, I mean, Joe Flacco in trouble right here. He slips out. Hey, you can throw me the ball. You're in trouble. Nothing's open. Just give me the ball. He gives him the ball, and look at this. Just the, the elusiveness, the athleticness, just uh, kind of squirt back inside for 10 yards. Here he goes, going to catch the boundary. Fantastic on second and two. Here he goes against the Patriots right up the middle. Good hard running. Got turned around but stayed on his feet. Look at him just kind of gets totally swung around right here uh, by a poor tackle. And then he's able to get right back in another 10 yards. Fantastic.
Here we go against the Cardinal again. Hits the hole. Great vision. Great speed to just fit between those holes. And he stays on his feet. He doesn't go down. 30-yard touchdown run right here. And they throw this man in the dumpster. Oh, my goodness. We all know the running back position is always disrespected. Here we go. I mean, folks, you're going to watch this run and be like, yeah, we won't play this, dude. You watch this one single run right here and be like, no. We don't need to play him. He won't help our team. What? What? Look at this. He goes 65 yards. 55 yards clean right here. Just barely touched, breaking all these tackles right here. One defender misses, two defender misses, able to kind of run right by him. The third and four defenders try to tackle him. He's too solid. He's so solid. You're not bringing this man down. And then we all know he's got the speed to outrun that last defender. And then against this Dolphins team, once again, here we go. Just hitting the right side. Easy peasy, 15 plus yards. Here he goes, just running right up the middle. The vision. Oh, my God, he's got such great vision. Great vision right here. He ends up tripping because he's he knows he's so good. He got a little excited on this one. Probably could have taken this one the last 30 yards, but unfortunately fell on his own right here. Here he goes, hitting the edge again, 10 yards. Here we go, hitting the edge, going back inside, hitting the edge again. Boom, the vision, the vision, following his blockers, seeing the hole instantly. The check down run and after the catch, fantastic, 15 yards on second and seven. Here we go in the red zone on second and two, and he gets stopped but once again the look back the cutback oh my god he starts to the right he sees there's nothing here he stops dead in his tracks he is moving at zero miles an hour right here standing still cut back and then sees the hole and then that acceleration boom right back at full speed two steps right into his run again boom 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 it's so gosh dang good here we go in the screen game multi-dimensional boom taking hits delivering hits no problem 10 yards here we go on a nice little out route running right up the sideline. And that speed, once again, that speed. Sheesh, look at this. Oh, my gosh. The speed, the high step in uh, awareness, speed. It's literally everything, folks. What is this dude missing as a running back? Nothing, nothing. The jump cut to the outside. One-on-one -on -one with number 24. A nice little stiff arm. And he gets 15 yards. Here he goes right up the middle. Oh, he's gone. Goodbye. Go oh, he gets shoved out of bounds from behind. But he Either way, the speed is there. 15, 20, 25, 30 yards consistently whenever he touches the ball. It's absolutely fantastic. All right, we got one more play from this season. He's only scored two touchdowns. We already saw the one against the Browns he, uh, pa uh, catching the ball here. Let's see what he can do in the speed department this year. Did the speed go down from what he was doing in 2018 and 2019? Maybe he's just not fast anymore. Maybe that's why the Texans got rid of him because he's just not fast anymore. Well, no, he's still fast because we got this uh, play right here. Game one of the season, the game that, hey, the Texans won. Oh, my goodness, what do we do? with winning uh, up until this point we've only won one game why do we win while well, Tyrod Taylor was playing that game and Philip Lindsay scored a touchdown that game so once those two players are healthy oh Philip Lindsay's still healthy I should be using him every single game after game number one but they weren't Ugh, what are y'all doing what are y'all doing y'all were losing and losing and losing and losing and losing and losing and still weren't using Philip Lindsay once again the utter disrespect but he's free, folks. He's on the Dolphins, ready to rock. And, uh, you know, he'll probably be disrespected in the media here as well because the media disrespects Tua. Well, they just love dis disrespecting everybody in Miami. So Tua and Philip Lindsay are going to be going off being, hey, no, you deserve credit. No, you deserve credit. No, we deserve credit. Yes, we deserve credit. Tua, Philip Lindsay, the best quarterback running back duo that the league is going to ever see. The league is on notice, folks. The league is on notice. But here we go. Philip Lindsay from this year, game one against the Jaguars. Here we go. Philip Lindsay from the five yard line. Here we go. Just going to be a nice little end around. They hand it off in the speed, untouched. The speed is still there. He's able to hit the end around and then 
just immediately get into the end zone. No problem right here. On touch. Look at that speed. The speed is so great. Speed is fantastic, folks. It's so gosh dang great. So, Philip Lindsay, <clears throat> absolutely fantastic. We have this six-minute highlight package. I don't think we need to watch this because in the other highlight package, we literally saw exactly what we needed to see. But let's just quickly see. We get anything good right here. I want to see like a 100-yard touchdown run. I doubt we'll get that. I doubt he has one. Um... And no fault of him. It's just probably his teams have never started on the one-yard line for a 100-yard run. Um, but he's just so gosh dang good, folks. He's back in the league. Uh, can't wait for him to be back in action on the field on Sundays. Uh, probably won't go this week. Probably too short turnaround from the time he got claimed uh, to the game. But definitely next week we will see Philip Lindsay. Here we go. Oh, just another one right here. Just getting stopped in that jump cut back to the outside and gets he he ran out of maybe a yard short where he should have. This was first and seven, only got six yards, a yard short of the first down. Probably should have, you know, fought for that extra yard, but it's Philip Lindsay, folks. We'll give him the free pass on this one error. We've seen one error, and it's a very minuscule error. And then here he goes when he gets into open space he's just he goes north and south folks he's not playing around he's not dancing just hitting north and south how far can I get with this great speed and it's usually about 30 yard chunks every single time on the goal line on fourth and goal clutch oh he gets stopped oh but he keeps going oh he gets stopped again but he keeps going okay this play oh my goodness we can stop after this one play because this was fantastic fourth and goal down 14 points in the second half this is so clutch gets stopped right at the line breaks free gets stopped again right at the line and then he keeps his feet moving and you don't want this player on your team what are y'all doing what are all these general managers and front office personnel doing that you look at a guy like philip Lindsay and be like no this man is not going to benefit our team what is wrong with y'all i need to know because this is absolute utter disrespect here <clears throat> Absolutely disrespectful as heck, but we respect him over here at Takes by Fans. Philip Lindsay, whenever you want to come on the show, you can come. We, we you can take over. The, I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> Do you want the show, Philip Lindsay? You deserve the entire show. Takes by Fans is officially run by Philip Lindsay now. We're handing over the show to him. Cannot wait to watch this man again. Philip Lindsay is back. Philip Lindsay is back, folks, and y'all should be aware. And the league is officially put on notice that they will be having to run into Philip Lindsay. Every single week for the rest of the year. Cannot wait. Ooh, cannot wait. Alrighty, folks, that is Philip Lindsay. Gotta love him. If you don't know him, now you know him. And uh, next time he's out on the field, he'll make sure you know him as well. Alrighty, so the last thing, uh, let's head over to the last thing we're going to do for today's show is uh, play around with the playoff machine, uh, predicting the winners of all the matchups this week, seeing what we believe the playoff picture will look like heading into week 13, and then we'll play around with it a little bit, what happens if all the upsets happen, who can get into the playoff picture by this week's end, who could fall dramatically if they keep losing and everybody else is losing, what happens at that point, so let's play around with it we'll talk about all these matchups talk them through a little bit and see what we get uh the playoff picture is going to be on the end of monday's game <clears throat> So here we go. Let's uh, recap and remind what the actual playoff seeding is right now. So here we go. In the AFC, the Titans still had that number one seed. Uh, it didn't matter what they did last week. If everybody won and they lost, which basically what happened, um, they still kept the number one seed. So Titans still number one, but they definitely need to win this week. They are not going to have the luxury this week of still losing while everybody else is winning and keeping that number one seed. Ravens are the number two seed at seven and three. Bills are the three seed at seven and four. Chiefs are the fourth seed at seven and four. Patriots are the fifth seed at seven and four. Uh, the Bills overtook that because they won on Thursday. They play before the Patriots, so we'll ha see what happens if the Patriots win and lose this week. How that affects the playoff seeding. Bengals are the sixth seed at six and four, and the Chargers are the final seventh seed at six and four in the AFC. And then in the NFC, the Cardinals are the number one seed in the NFC. Absolutely fantastic. Green Bay is number two at eight and three. Bucks are the third seed at seven and three. The Cowboys have fallen to the fourth seed at seven and four. Rams are the fifth seed at seven and three. Vikings are the sixth seed at five and four. 
five. Holy cow. So uh, we're already seeing, I mean, from the from number two, three, and four, and five seeds in the NFC, they're all very close. Seven wins, eight wins, and then it goes dramatically drop from seven wins to five wins. So um, these NFC teams are going to have trouble kind of fighting for those last two spots where it's very, very crowded. A little bit more room at the top of the top five teams in the NFC. So Vikings at six seed at five and five, and the 49ers are the seven seed at five and five. So that is the playoffs as of right now, but let's see what is going to change and what is going to happen as we're predicting the winners of this week's outcome. So here we go. First game up here, Steelers at the Bengals, and we just cannot buy into this Steelers offense, and this is not a good thing for the Steelers team. Not being in the playoffs right now, right now at kind of, you know, a little bit past the midway part of the season. We know Big Ben is going to kind of decline a little bit. How much is yet to be determined. But if we're just looking at last year, the drop-off is really going to be significant week by week as we progress through the season. So the fact that the Steelers are not in the playoff picture right now and the fact that they have to kind of continually continually win and have other teams lose as, this, as the rest of the season progresses, this is not a great sign for the Steelers because we can't really believe that they're going to win too many more games based on the offensive. Big Ben's arm declining. Uh, the offense was not our uh, was already not looking good the entire first half of the season. We're not going to expect it to finally click as Big Ben is finally declining here. So we're going to take the Bengals with the win here. Um, and they beat the Steelers, and they will still stay the sixth seed even if they just win. They'll need a little bit more help if they want to move up with some other teams losing. All right, then we get the Jets at the Texans, and we buy this Texans team. As long as they have Tyrod, they will be able to move the ball offensively, and we've seen that. Tyrod's played in, what, three games so far, two and one in those games, looking absolutely good. Not great. Tyrod's not looking like a great quarterback, but he's able to move the ball. He's able to kind of pick up the third downs decently, consistently. He's able to kind of stretch the field vertically and stretch the field horizontally with his legs. He just adds the extra depth, the extra oomph of offense that this Texans team has needed ever since he went down week one. <clears throat> So we believe this Texans team to be a real team. The Jets going back to Zach Wilson this week. I don't expect Zach Wilson to be good because he hasn't been good all year. Zach Wilson has had like three good throws so far this season. And what was it? The real early game um, where they kind of came back a little bit. Um, and Zach Wilson hit that big throw to Corey Davis. That was maybe a little ill-advised, but it was like touchdown, so we give him credit. It was like that game where he made like two really great throws throws and that was kind of the highest Zach Wilson's been and ever since that moment he went back to floundering big time so no really be, uh, believability bet ability in this Jets team two teams that probably aren't going to affect the playoff picture because they've only got like two or three wins so far but I'm giving the Texans the win here it's one of our official picks this week and we're going to take the Texans to win and obviously as we see it's not going to change the playoff picture because they're not in the playoff conversation really at all at the moment Alrighty, then we get the Bucks at the Colts here, and the Colts are still not in the playoff picture, which is kind of crazy, that big win against the Bills, because we're still not believing this Colts team as is a good team as a whole. With this Bucks team, we get Tom Brady, who cleaned up the interceptions last week, um, at least the interceptions and turnovers that were his fault. Um, and this defense is still getting it done. Best rushing defense in the league that we're seeing. Only give up uh, 750 yards. It's 400 yards below the average of what the, the league has been giving up so far through 10, 11 games, whatever your team has played. So, not believing that this Colts team is good, we're going to give this win to the Bucks here. We'll see what happens if the Colts do win, if they can get into the playoff picture this week. But I still think this Colts team not truly buying into them 100%. But we'll see if that changes this week. Not really even buying into them that much. Not even Obviously not buying them 100%. Really not even buying them... 50%, a little less than 50% buying the running game. All right. All right. Then we get the Falcons at the Jaguars. Once again, this 
game isn't really going to affect the seedings really at all. So it doesn't really matter who we choose here. But we're going to go the Falcons. They just have a little bit more experience than the Jaguars do. Um, Trevor Lawrence is one of the unclutchest quarterbacks that there are. He's only a rookie, so we're not you know weighing that too heavy. And we're not knocking Trevor Lawrence that much. But he is very, very not clutch. He can't get it done if it's a one-possession game. He usually turns over the ball on his last possession. And he doesn't really score that often to begin with here. Cordero Patterson should be good to go here for the Atlanta Falcons. And that's definitely the best thing about that. Uh, that he's there everything. He does the rushing. He does the receiving. And you know, without Calvin Ridley, you don't really have the receiving anymore. So this is going to be a a game. I don't know if it's going to be good. I don't know if it's going to be bad. We'll stay away from betting this game as well. There's no great value either way. We'll call the Falcons win. And as we saw with the Jets at Texans game, the winner is not going to change anything. All right, then we get the Panthers at the Dolphins, two teams that are maybe potentially trying to get back into the playoff race. The uh, Panthers started real good at 3-0 ever since then. Womp, 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 because it was Sam Darnold. Mm -hmm. um, and then for this Dolphins team, got up to a bad start, but recently has turned it around. What are we on, a three-game winning streak right now here for Miami? Um, so, you know, potentially trying to get back into the playoff picture. We just watched Cam Newton yesterday on the show we hinged a bonus pick on the Cam Newton footage from last week and we still think the Dolphins are going to win this game our bonus pick is Dolphins plus two points I think that's great value not buying Cam Newton against this good Dolphins defense that has cleaned it up over the last two three weeks here so we're going to say the Dolphins win this game and they are still not ready to re-emerge or really just emerge. They were never in the playoff picture. Their Dolphins are not ready to emerge, but they're laying the groundwork for a late week 16, 17, 18 playoff push. And we'll see if they're able to kind of be put in that position. They really have to win out one more loss and it's kind of uh, almost impossible for them to make the playoffs. But I think the Dolphins get it done here today or tonight, tomorrow, I should say. Uh, Dolphins win win over the Panthers. All right, now this game, this is going to change a lot here. Titans at the Patriots. I believe this is the nationally televised game on CBS, which is great. Uh, the Bills have played on Thanksgiving, so that's not going to affect the game in my area. So I get to watch the Titans at the Patriots, and it's going to be so gosh dang good. And we're going to see. We'll play around with both options right here in a second once we get everything predicted here. But Titans at the Patriots. It's Bill Belichick. There's still no rushing game. Um, A.J. Brown is out for the Titans. Julio Jones is already out for the Titans as well. He's on IR. So this Titans offense, the passing game is going to be almost non-existent uh, because they're going to rely on Ryan Tannehill. And Bill Belichick is going to shut that down. We know there's no rushing game here. Uh, they got rid of Adrian Peterson. How unfortunate. Obviously, no Derrick Henry obviously so we're gonna say the Patriots win this game and let's see what happens when the Patriots win over the Titans how much do they move up they're at the fifth seed currently Titans at the one seed and with the Patriots winning oh oh my god what a big jump here Titans go from the one seed to the three seed Patriots go from the fifth seed to the second seed holy moly big implications here with the Patriots winning this game holy cow let's see if this Patriots team can keep the second seed here with everybody else's end results so we get the Eagles at the Giants. Giants, uh, no, they're trash. We know this. They're not going to be able to make a push for a playoff spot. But this Eagles team is. They're kind of like the Dolphins a little bit, maybe a little bit more above the Dolphins overall. Eagles got out to a little bit of a bad start, but they've cleaned it up these last two, three, four weeks here, winning games decently, being competitive consistently, looking real good here. So we'll see. Are the Eagles ready to potentially get back in the playoff hunt here? Let's see. We're obviously crowning them the winner over the Giants. Giants this week getting rid of their offensive coordinator with Freddie Kitchens. We don't think that was a smart decision at all. We'll call the uh, Eagles winning this game and do they get into the playoff picture? Ooh, not quite yet. We'll see if anything changes with the uh, outcome of the 49ers and Vikings game. But the Eagles are laying the groundwork just like the Dolphins are. We'll see how the end of the season results. But two winnable games here for the Dolphins and the Eagles that they need. They must win these games. We'll see what happens.
All right, then we get the Chargers at the Broncos. Chargers clinging on to that last wild card spot, and we believe that they do win this week. We can't buy this Broncos offense. They have the offense to get it done. They just don't, and it's unfortunate. A little bit of Teddy Bridgewater just not really uh, expanding the field horizontally or vertically. So we would like this <clears throat> Broncos team to start being a little bit more competitive offensively where we know this Chargers team, they can light it up because they've got really two great just uh, – Standard wide receivers. These are not gadget players. Um, you know, Keenan, Keelan Allen and Mike Williams. These are not gadget wide receivers. These are just straight up. Take the top off the defense. Go up. Winning 50-50 battles. One-on-one -on -one coverage. No problem. Two solid, great wide receivers that are tall. And they're just going down the field and trusting Justin Herbert and Brandon Staley's decently running this team. Uh, I'll, I'll go more than decently. That was a little bit of an undersell. Uh, very goodly running this team. <clears throat> So we're calling the Chargers with the win here, and they'll be able to move up to the fourth seed with just a win because the Chiefs are on a bye this week, so they don't get a really say in their overall win and loss column. So this could be a good week for the Chargers to get back into a little bit of comfortable space space taking over the division lead and getting that fourth seed so this is a big week for the Chargers reclaim that division lead taking advantage of the Chiefs on the bye we'll see if they can do it big 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 implications here with the Chargers game <clears throat> All right, then we get the Rams at the Packers, and this is going to be a big game as well. Two high-profile teams in the NFC, and we're calling the Rams here with the win. Uh, with that, uh, the Green Bay Packers fall from the two to the three seed, and the Rams stay at the fifth seed. Uh, let's just finish off these last three games here, and then we'll go through and kind of uh, rearrange if uh, some wonkiness happens, if, every, if uh, what can change at that point. Uh, so for Viking, <clears throat> Vikings 49ers, we're liking the Vikings this week, folks, straight up and with the points here. <clears throat> this is going to be a big game as we see both teams 5-5 five and five here uh, having these last two playoff seeds. So we're going to click the Vikings win this game, and let's see if anybody gets back into the wild card picture. This could be where the Eagles could sneak back in. Let's see what happens if the Vikings win. The Eagles get into the seventh seed. Let's quickly flip this one. What happens if the 49ers win? Do the Vikings drop out? 49ers come in and do the Eagles keep the sixth, seventh seed with the win? Here we go. With the 49ers winning, yep, it's just a switch. So whoever wins this game with the Vikings will keep the uh, keep the playoff spot. The loser could potentially lose their spot if the Eagles win. Wow, wow, wow. Watch out for the Eagles, folks. And I would love to see this Eagles team in the playoffs. Once again, Brandon Staley, coach of the year, folks. Come on. He's way, way, way undervalued in that. Get that man in the conversation. Last two games, Browns at <clears throat> Browns at the Ravens here. We're gonna want, we're gonna call this win for the Ravens here. Do they get in the top? Oh no, they're already the number one seed. So they would stay the number one seed if they win. And then remember, you know, they get the number one seed because the Titans fall out of the number one seed. And then the last game of the week, the Seahawks at Washington. And once again, no real, not a really great chance for either of these teams to make the playoffs here, but they'll have to lay the foundation. This is a game turning week for both these teams. Uh, we're going to call Washington wins it. I think their defense is locking up here and Taylor Heineke is playing with some nice confidence and aggressiveness. We love it. I say Washington beats Seattle and that does not change the playoff picture. So, based on what we believe the outcomes of this matchup are going to be, let's start in the AFC. The Ravens get the number one seed. The Titans go from the one seed <coughs> to the three seed. Ravens go from the two seed and reclaiming that number one seed in the AFC. The Patriots get the number two seed. The Chargers go up to the fourth seed. The Bengals go to the fifth seed. The Bills fall back to the sixth seed. And the Chiefs fall back to the seventh seed. And then in the NFC... We had the Cardinals retaining the number one seed in the NFC, even though they do not play this week. The Bucks go to the two seed. The Packers fall down to the three seed. The Cowboys stay the fourth seed here with the division win. Uh, we get to the Rams staying at the fifth seed. The Vikings keeping the sixth seed. And uh, the Eagles getting into the playoff picture at the seventh seed while the 49ers fall out. Alrighty, let's play around a little bit right here. Let's see, can the Steelers get in the playoff picture here if they beat the Bengals? 
Yes, they can get the seven seed with a with a win over the Bengals here and everything else kind of going exactly as we were kind of saying a little bit. So the Steelers could get this seven seed. What happens if the Colts and the Steelers win? Who gets that seven seed? It's still the Steelers, so the Colts need to win, and they need a little bit of help if they want to get back in the playoffs. Let's see if the Colts win and the Bengals win. Who gets kind of that seventh seed? Is it going to be the Bengals, or is it going to be the Colts having the tiebreaker over the Bengals? Let's see. Alrighty, if the Bengals win, they get the fifth seed, and the Colts are still not in the playoff picture. So this Colts team is about a two weeks that they need to kind of win a little consistently right here if they want to try and get back in the playoff hunt. Alrighty, what else can we play around with? Let's see if the Titans beat the Patriots. What happens at this point? Titans go to the uh, obviously stay the number one seed and the Patriots fall to the seventh seed. What happens if the uh, Titans, Steelers, and Colts all win? It's the Patriots and the Steelers with the playoff spots. The Colts can still not get in quite yet. Wow. Colts are going to need a little bit of work here. Let's see what happens if the Broncos beat the Chargers this week. The Colts will get into the playoffs. Okay, so the Colts need to win. They need the Chargers to lose. And then the Colts can take that seven seed where the Chargers would be. So there is an option where the Colts can get back into the playoff picture this week. But they need the Chargers to lose. Interesting. I don't think that happens. All right, now let's start seeing what happens in this NFC side. Uh, if the Packers beat the Rams, Packers stay the two seed, Rams stay the fifth seed. What happens if the Packers win and the 49ers win? Uh, the 49ers obviously uh, replace the Vikings as the sixth seed. And I believe that's really all we can kind of play around with in the NFC a little bit. If the Colts win... Obviously, they beat the Bucks, so the Bucks stay the third seed. Packers win. They would stay the second seed in that instance. So it doesn't seem like anybody can take can overtake the number one seed in the NFC. So the uh, Cardinals had the luxury here of being on the bye, and nothing will change their status in the playoff positioning. Um, what happens if the Browns win? If the Browns upset the Ravens this week, what happens? The Patriots. Oh, my goodness. The Patriots could be the number one seed this week, folks. They need to win. They need the Titans to lose. They need the Ravens to lose. Uh, they already had the uh, – the Bills have already played, so that's already factored into this, folks. So the Patriots could be the number one seed by the end of Monday, folks. Well, actually, the end of Sunday because – the Monday night game is going to have no cause on this AFC playoff picture. It's going to come down to that Sunday night game. Browns at Ravens. Wow, oh, wow. Let's see. Can the Browns get in the playoff picture with the win? Uh, let's see what happens if uh, the Steelers win. Steelers get into the seventh seed. Let's see what happens. Uh, I don't know. I don't think the Browns can get in the playoff picture this week. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. What happens if the – oh, no, no, no. They can. They can. They need the Chargers to lose. So if the Chargers lose, that opens up the potential for the Browns or the Steelers to get in the playoff picture and can actually – they both can get in if the Bengals lose. So big games riding here for really all the AFC North teams, the Browns, the Ravens, the Steelers, the Bengals. Big playoff shake up here between those two matchups those two division matchups here so man oh man brown steelers colts you can get into the playoff picture you can keep a playoff spot here and the patriots can get that number one seed so we know everybody's real close here that's what's making the back end of the season so exciting a win can literally go from number one to like number two the fifth seed can get to that number one seed it's all going to depend on what happens on sunday a lot of potential major shakeups here in the AFC, folks. We could potentially have a new number one seed, and we can potentially see a couple, one or two new teams in the playoff picture by the end of Sunday. Absolutely crazy. So, there's still hope. There's still time to fight. If you're out, there's still ways to get in. If they're, if you're in, there's still ways to get out. Must compete every week and literally for the rest of the season because it is so close. So,
Uh, that's what we predict this playoff picture to be. Uh, in the AFC, Ravens 1 seed, Patriots 2nd seed, Titans 3rd seed, Chiefs 4th seed, Bengals 5th seed, Bills 6th seed, Chargers 7th seed. And then in the NFC, Cardinals 1 seed, Bucks 2 seed, Packers 3 seed, Cowboys 4th seed, Rams 5th seed, Vikings 6th seed, and the Philadelphia Eagles the 7th seed. Alrighty, that is going to do it for us today, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. But before we close out, let's do one last thing here. Well, let's go to the Fox Super 6 bet app since, you know, we're getting out of here in time for that Ohio State-Michigan game. Fox Super 6 actually put a Fox Super 6 for the Ohio State-Michigan uh, game. So... Let's kind of do this together, give you our thoughts, and see if you're playing along at home, if we can all make a little bit of money on this Fox Super 6 app. So first question up, what will be the total combined score at the half? 0-24, to 25-27, 28-30, 31-32, 33-35, to 35, and 36 plus points right here. We'll say it's decently high scoring, mostly all from Ohio State. We're going to say the combined score at halftime is going to be 31, to th actually 28-30 to 30 points, that's where we're going. Which team will have the most penalty yards and how many will they have? I think, uh, you know, Michigan is going to be, you know, a little underwhelmed by this Ohio State team. Maybe commit a little bit more penalties. We're going to say Michigan commits the most penalties and they will have 51 plus yards of penalty yardage. Which team will have the highest punt average, and what will that punt average be? Once again, I just think the Michigan football team is going to be punting a little bit more. We know the history of Ohio State at Michigan, big rivalry, and Michigan really gets the short end of the stick the most of the time. So we're going to say Michigan punts, and their average punt will be a good one, 47 to 48 yards. They, they, they'll get it done punting. They'll get it done punting. All right, which team will have the longest touchdown and how many yards will it be? We're going to Ohio State with a 41 to 45 yard touchdown, highest touchdown of the game. Which team will have the longest field goal and how many yards will it be? We're going Michigan kicking a 43 yarder. Uh, which team will have which team will win and by how many points? We're going to go Ohio State by 5 to 6 points. We're going to say Michigan keeps it close. They're at home for this game. So that is our Fox Super 6 of what is going to happen in Big Noon's game, Michigan and Ohio State. All right, folks, now we are officially out of here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We're back live tomorrow noon Eastern for our pregame show starting noon Eastern all the way up to 1 o'clock before the 1 o'clock matchups kick off. We're out of here. Join us tomorrow. Enjoy your full day of college football. Enjoy your full day of football tomorrow, which we will be at. But first, stop by for our pregame show. Last second best bets, last second advice, last seconds in and out. We'll talk it all through. All right.